Hey there. So this past week, the Turkish military commenced operations against the YPG in Afrin in the northwest of Syria. My audience really wants me to weigh in, so I've been looking seriously at Syria for the first time in a while. And I've come to a really grim conclusion. I think the U.S. government has won the war in Syria. For the next couple minutes, I'm going to throw out morals, ethics, and basic common sense, and just look simply at Washington, D.C.'s goals in Syria and how thoroughly they have achieved them. Don't worry, we'll get back to morals and ethics at the end of the video. So Syria's president, Bashar Assad, is still in charge of more territory than anybody else in Syria. This is supposedly a big failure for the United States. But in truth, Washington DC's goal was never a better form of government or the welfare of the Syrian people. It was always about sticking it to Syria, one of the few countries that has ever had the courage to stand up to the United States and our ally Israel. And it was also about sticking it to Syria's allies in Russia and Iran. The chaotic nightmare that the Syrian people have suffered for the past seven years has served these purposes very well. In the United States, we have a massive victimization complex, so we believe that everybody's winning the war on Syria except for us. Let's take an honest look at some of these winners. Assad used to be in firm control of all of Syria. The news over the past year has been all about how he's winning, but what is he winning exactly? Between 2012 and 2017, Turkey, the United States, and a bunch of Gulf countries spent billions to take half of Assad's country away from him. He has taken a lot of it back, but his country has been destroyed, and the folks who destroyed it are going to make sure he doesn't get any humanitarian money to rebuild it. He's an international pariah, and the absolute best case for his retirement is a cold apartment in Moscow. Iran is supposedly another big winner. This is absurd. After the safe space for Sunni jihadists that the U.S. and Turkey opened up went a little further than intended and almost overthrew Iraq, Iran had a lot to lose. For a minute there, it looked like ISIS might take Syria, Iraq, and then come gunning for Iran. The Iranian regime had to spend billions of dollars it didn't have fighting ISIS. We learned last month what the Iranian people think of that. The U.S. public had a brief moment of ISIS panic before the Ebola panic pushed it out of the headlines back in 2014. Iran has been fighting for its life for three and a half years. The Washington, D.C. experts want us to believe that Iran is about to take over the whole region. This is beyond ridiculous. Iran has only now just scraped back into the position that it had in 2011, except now there are U.S. bases in Iraq and Syria that are not going anywhere. And the Iranian public is just about done with foreign adventuring. Russia isn't quite as screwed as Iran is, but they are trapped in a quagmire too. How many times has Russia declared victory and announced their withdrawal from Syria now? It's got to be at least three times. Putin desperately wants this war to be over. Unfortunately, the prestige of his kleptocratic regime is deeply wrapped up in Syria continuing to look like a success. So he's stuck with this ulcer, more than two years into what he had hoped would be a brief engagement. And now Turkey. Ah, uh, Turkey. I don't know what it was. Uh, maybe it was Ottoman dreams or just the desire to be a good NATO ally to the United States. But Turkey took a lead role in the Get Assad project from the very beginning. They have gotten burned really, really hard. The Turks were on board with the Get Assad project, but less so with the Get the People We Were Using to Get Assad project because all that left was the Kurds. The prime U.S. partners in Syria are referred to by a range of acronyms that mean subtly different things, but Turkey just sees one acronym. The PKK is designated a terrorist organization by both the United States and Turkey, and it's been trying to dismember Turkey for decades. It's hidden in a number of ways, but nobody really disputes that the PKK is closely connected to the U.S.'s Kurdish allies. Turkey is understandably really not cool with sharing a border with a bunch of folks who just might want to erase that border. The U.S. doesn't really care. So in August 2016, Turkey invaded Syria to keep these two Kurdish pockets from joining up. Which brings us to Afrin. The Turks really want to deal with this larger pocket here, but they can't. The U.S. has a large presence here now. 
Turkey's President Erdogan has talked about going into Menbij in the big pocket. This has gotten the standard World War III starts tomorrow crowd really excited, but that's not going to happen. The United States has liberally sprinkled special forces soldiers throughout the defenses of Manbij. Turkey didn't like the consequences when it shot down a Russian plane back in 2015, and killing a U.S. soldier would be infinitely worse. Tensions are high, and a mistake could happen, but I highly doubt it would lead to anything serious. As far as what's going to happen in Efrin, I legitimately don't know. My guess is that this will work out best for Assad. It's already had everybody looking the other way as he bit a big chunk out of the Idlib deep confliction zone. Turkey and its mostly worthless Syrian rebel allies will probably get bogged down, and then the Syrian government will take over in a face-saving agreement that allows Turkey to claim they wiped out a PKK pocket. That's just my guess. I could be completely wrong about all of that. What strikes me the most as I look at this incident is just how much the Syrian conflict means to everybody else involved and how little it means to the United States. Now that ISIS has been mostly wrapped up, the U.S. public has moved on, and the U.S. government is free to pursue what it sees as its strategic interests. Turkey's move in Afrin plays directly into Washington, D.C.'s hands. We've got 2,000 or so U.S. soldiers setting up permanent shop in Syria right now. The great problem with Iraq, from Washington, D.C.'s perspective, was always that it had a government that didn't want us there. Fox News loves to blame Obama for leaving Iraq in 2011, but it was Iraq's government that kicked us out. Erdogan is solving that problem for the U.S. government right now. If Turkey manages to take out this Kurdish enclave in Afrin, these Kurds will want the United States to stay forever. So in a very short-term, burn-it-all-down sort of way, the United States government has won the war in Syria. All its enemies and one of its allies have been overextended, beat up, and trapped in a chaotic nightmare that's not ending anytime soon. The United States now has a military base smack dab in the middle of the Middle East and hosts that desperately want them to stay. The U.S. government is the only player in Syria's conflict that is in better shape than it was in 2011. So, yay? Let's take it back to the realm of morals, ethics, and common sense. This victory for the U.S. government has been a catastrophe for Syria, Iraq, Iran and Turkey, and I would argue that eventually it's going to be pretty bad for the United States as well. I would argue, some would disagree, but I would argue that this kind of scorched earth policy from Washington, D.C. might have been appropriate during the Cold War. The Cold War has been over for 26 years. Washington, D.C.'s experts desperately want to convince you that Putin or Assad or Iran's mullahs or anybody is the new Hitler. That's insane. Hitler's been in the ground for 73 years, but it's the only history anybody in Washington, D.C. knows. I've got a couple videos on why that's so crazy. My government desperately wants to convince us that there's a real threat here. Because if there isn't, then it's actually Washington, D.C. that's the real threat. My fear is that the U.S. government is going to use what it has done in Syria as a model going forward. It may take a couple more decades, but the rest of the world is going to get very, very sick of this. Washington, D.C. has won the war in Syria. The United States has not. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, and special thanks to the producer and patrons that made this video possible. If you want a free essay on a completely different topic, I suggest you sign up for my email newsletter by clicking on the link here. Thanks. Also, by popular demand, I have set up other donation strategies. On the website, I have got a PayPal link if you want to make a one-time donation. Thank you so much.